Welcome back. This is a continuation of other videos I've done titled Solidarity and What Do You Mean News Report and Pissed Off People from Around the World. You get my point. We only look at a handful of countries in this one and for your convenience I'll read anything that's captioned on the videos. This is the moment police shot a protester with live ammunition. The man was restrained by police before he attempted to flee. A 21 year old student was taken to hospital in critical condition. Elsewhere a man arguing with protesters was doused in petrol and set on fire. The middle aged man suffered severe burns. The two incidents came as thousands of demonstrators had been taken to the streets. After a student died during an anti-government protest on Friday the 8th of November, Charles Tidslock, 22, died after falling from a building. He is the first person to die from injuries sustained during the unrest, which began six months ago. Eleventh of November. Recent violence has only been escalating, with footage shared online appearing to show an officer driving straight at protesters. Police were also seen firing tear gas during clashes at a university. Demonstrators also blocked roads and transport stations across the city. as anger over alleged police brutality boiled over. Banks and businesses linked to China were also targeted by rioters. These violent activities and disturbances have caused major consequences for almost everyone in Hong Kong. If there are still any wishful thinking that by escalating violence, the Hong Kong ASEAN government will yield to pressure to satisfy the so-called political demands. I'm making this statement clear and loud here. That will not happen. Violence is not going to give us any solution to the problems that Hong Kong is facing. I just want to note that it's good to see the people that are damaging the banks and businesses being called rioters because I've usually seen what the difference between protesters and rioters in the media is down to which country it is. So good reporting on that. Now over to France to see how they're going. France is witnessing the largest strike is seen in years. The demonstrators have turned violent in some places. Union workers from several professions are angry about planned pension reforms. Demonstrations took place in over 40 cities across the country. Police have detained several protesters amidst the clashes. Paris's popular tourist sites have been shut and public transport services have been disrupted. And now we're going over to Iran and I'm pretty sure this video has a reporter so I'm off the hook. Iran has acknowledged what many here already know. Security services killed protesters during demonstrations last month. State media broadcast the Iranian government side. Its report described some of those involved in the protests as rioters and thugs armed with firearms and knives. In the southwestern city of Mashahar, there are media reports alleging a massacre took place. But Iran says they were dealing with separatist elements who had an ulterior motive.
If the military forces and police didn't interfere, not only the lives of people in this region would have been in danger, but also the imports of essential goods into the country from Imam port would have been jeopardized, since the number of trucks had been reduced to 400 a day. This caused the security forces and the police to get involved to protect peace for the people. The authorities insist some protesters were armed and were firing at security services. The thick weeds you see behind me and to the right are where the hostile groups were hiding and shooting at the police. But thank God the armed forces vigilantly came to the fields and foiled their plots. It's still unclear how many people were killed. Amnesty International say it's more than 200, a figure the government rejects. I can tell you that the numbers and figures given by hostile groups about the deaths in Iran's recent protests are sheer lies. Real statistics are seriously different from what they announce, and numbers are far less than what they claim. But United States President Donald Trump had his own figures. Iran is killing perhaps thousands and thousands of people right now as we speak. That's why they cut off the internet. So they cut off the internet so people can't see what's going on. The violence is the worst a country has witnessed for decades. The US president's intervention will not be welcomed here in Iran. It will further fuel the government's claim that outside forces were behind some of the troubles. There's a feeling here that the actual number of those killed will eventually be known. For now, the Iranian government says security forces acted to protect lives, but some peaceful protesters were also killed in what they call suspicious circumstances. Asad Beg, Al Jazeera, Tehran. And while we're here, we'll cross the border to Iran's neighbor Iraq and see what's going on there. Police are firing live rounds into protesters as they demand improved living standards and an end to corruption. Friday the 4th of October. We need a government that will be just to the people, that will end the unemployment, that will end the ignorance, not increase corruption. We need a government that will hold the corrupt accountable. The violent protests have escalated each day since first erupting on the 1st of October. The unrests have not been quilled by promises of reform from the Prime Minister. Adil Adul Madid's promises aimed to fool people, and today they are firing live gunshots at us. Alright, now this is going to be the last one. We're going to jump continents and go down to Chile, and this is something that I found quite interesting about tear gas because I've thought of this before I've wondered about the health risks that would come with these dispersant agents or whatever and I believe that one has a reporter so I can put my feet up for this one as well the famous 16th century biochemist Paracelsus once said that the difference between a beneficial and a toxic chemical was the dose and the dose of the tear gas that is being fired every single day in this and other parts of Chile's capital is massive. In the last two weeks, the tear gas has become much stronger, more toxic. Water with bicarbonate of soda to alleviate pain isn't working anymore. The chemical agent is chlorobenzaldine malononitrile, or CS for short, which isn't a gas, but a solid mixed with a dispersal agent. But for Carmen Berenguer and her husband Carlos, what counts is that it's making them ill. They live right above what's nicknamed Ground Zero, where they've been demonstrations for nearly two months. Even with their windows taped and shut, the tear gas seeps in. It's been very difficult for my health because it's aggravating my asthma. We have headaches, lightheadedness, all those things too. I've only left my house once since October 18th, and I was sick for three days because the air outside is unbreathable. I'm worried about the long-term effects. And so she should be, according to several studies carried out in the United States. To begin with, tear gas exposure is meant to be limited to 10 seconds, not hours for weeks on end. 
Even after the security forces are long gone, you can still smell the tear gas, especially if it's windy. The residues of these crowd control weapons remain on the ground, on the dirt, and on just about everything else that you can see here. If you don't have the, the Dr. Leon Goiti from the Diego Portales Medical School warns that over time, CS decomposes into cyanide, especially at high temperatures. If you are going to use this kind of, of tools to, to restore order, which sometimes is necessary, uh, uh, you should do it with, con with, with, uh, with knowledge, with research, investigation. It's urgent to measure the amount of cyanide from these bombs. And because of the absence of serious studies, cancer can't be ruled out either, he says. Unlike many of their neighbors, Carmen and Carlos say they can't move out. Carmen is a writer and works from home and loves living here. She just hopes the price won't be too high. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Santiago. All right, that's all, folks. Oh, well, while we're on Chile, I want to show you this graph I found in an article by BBC about all the different protest movements around the world. The link will be included below. But is it big enough for you to see, Australians? Can you, can you see this easily, Australians? It's about income inequality. Yes, can you see where we are? All right, um, don't go send fire to people, folks. Don't go doing that. And uh, don't take shit from your governments either. Don't stand for it. And governments, don't go firing live rounds into your people. Don't go firing anything into your people, you fucking assholes. Alright, like, subscribe, and have a good one.